All right, we're back for another portfolio review where I'll run through an aspiring developer or junior developer's portfolio with the goal of just making it as effective as it can be. So this one is for Cami. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. But we're going to go ahead and jump right into taking a look at the static assets. Make sure nothing is too large. Um, let's see. I don't think so. I mean, this is about as minimal as it gets. Um, let's see. Main. Oh, that's good for you. Okay, because I saw projects. I figured you'd have like screenshots or something, so I want to check them out. But I, I do like that you are loading the static assets um, when you need them. I mean, I, I would almost, because your website is so simple and it's so basic, I don't think it's going to hurt you to preload those assets for when they do um, choose to view them on another section of your website it might help uh was there kind of a delay at all hold on let's do a hard refresh um because when i actually loaded this page initially i thought i saw some weird loading um image or just weird animations with the images loading and they just weren't fully loaded in so I, I wonder if I would preload these, but I, I think this is pretty large. Around 200 is what you had this at, uh, 200 kilobytes. That's pretty large for this small of an icon. Um, okay, so you don't click it, it doesn't enlarge. I think you could optimize that. So just look up tiny PNG on Google and you could actually just throw these uh, PNG files on there. It'll optimize them, give you a really uh, small footprint, and I would re-upload these static assets. All right, cool. So about, wow, that text is small. And it's crammed together. I like how you left aligned it. Makes it a, makes it a little bit more readable, but okay, Twitter, hopefully open, the, okay, you open this in a new tab, good. Email, that's a mail too, right? And contact page, you have a contact page. Okay, cool. So this text is really small. Enlarge it. What do you have it set at? It might be my resolution. Whoops. Uh, 12 pixels. It looks small. I, so I think bare minimum, I've always encouraged people to have it at least 12 pixels, but um, I, I can tell you right now with my resolution, um, it's, it's uh, 1920 by 1080. This is small to read. I would increase it to at least 14 pixels and see how that looks. And I think a little bit more line spacing would, um, or like a, increasing the, the line height, even just creating a little bit more space between each line is going to go a long way with just making it more readable. So I would actually increase the, uh, the space between each line first and see if it becomes a little bit more readable and then increase the font size to 14 pixels. Um, I, would, I would probably do both, but, but try one first. Uh, okay, so I have three years of experience in web development. A lot of passion goes into all my websites. Many projects can be found in project section. Feel free to give me feedback. Happy to. Okay, so you, you have a little bit of a call to action. It's... Um, it's a lot, so you don't really, so you, you kind of start off with an about me. Um, I like I like that you're getting straight to the point of the stack that you focus on, HTML, CSS, Node.js, React. Um, I mean, 
I I would I would do JavaScript and then emphasize Node and React for your stack, because I think I think there's this misconception that you need to highlight the frameworks and emphasize the frameworks or you know like the backend engine like Node, where a good developer is going to be able to pick up anything with JavaScript, right? So um, if you know, hopefully you're open to taking a position that uh, uses Angular, right? And so when you're emphasizing React.js over JavaScript, it might make someone wonder, do they really want to learn anything else? Um, did they just learn React and not really dive into the fundamentals of JavaScript? And so you're probably going to be challenged on JavaScript quite a bit just because you didn't even list it. So I want to get people away from saying, I'm a React developer, I'm a no debate. Uh, no developer, and I I want you to say you're a JavaScript developer if you're you're going to focus on a language in that statement. What else? Um, I don't think there's anything. Um, it, it's pretty simple. There's nothing personable about this. It's it's very dry. It's minimal, but I think a picture would go a long way. Um, if you're going to highlight an about me section and that's the first thing someone sees. Let them see your face. Uh, try to create that trust. Try to create that connection with them as early as possible. Otherwise, this is a very, very dry way to introduce anyone to your portfolio. Um, I would almost just have them jump right into the projects. But So I have some feedback about the projects. Uh, you have a project, project, project. What does this go to? OK. Can you include a picture with this back visit site? There should probably be a GitHub link. Uh, hopefully you're using source control. If not, put your code on source control, like uh, something like GitHub, um, and link to that. So they should have a live link to your website. Well, first things first, I highly encourage you to include thumbnails or screenshots of what the app does. Um, this seems to be very text-driven layout. I don't know if those are the right words for it, but there, there are no images. And I I think you're hurting yourself with that. Uh, you just have a bunch of really small bunched up text. You have a little context that you're providing here. But I it, we're visual creatures. We need we need images. I think I think it would strengthen your portfolio to include thumbnails and screenshots. It, just like one. One or two. Uh, some people do like a desktop and mobile version of their app. Some people will just take a screenshot of the most exciting part of their app or that looks the best. Um, so I think context is good. You have the title. Um, you have context. Here's a bit about the... I don't know, think this is needed uh, because it probably says that for each one, right? See how that image is kind of getting loaded in a little bit slowly. Um, optimize that. Yeah, I, I would include a screenshot. So when you click, I don't know if I like the word view. When I click view, I would expect to go to the website. And so you're kind of creating a frustrating experience when they expect to load the website and then they just get more information. They don't even get to see the website. So the, the thing that I think your portfolio lacks is any sort of visibility early on into what your project is, right? And I I would, I would, Think about like what what are employers looking for in your portfolio project? Of course they want context. Like what the heck is this? But they should be able to figure that out as soon as they dive into the project. And your project should. That's why I highly recommend people include like a landing page um, for kind of user signups. Uh, just like think about like how to make a really simple landing page for your project because that can that can dive into like what the heck this even is. Uh, but I think your project should kind of speak for itself with that landing page, and that's where you can provide a lot more context. Here, I think I think you still need to capture their attention. You can do that through thumbnails and images, um, but I I also think that employers are going to be looking for like what was the stack that you used for this? Um, what kind of challenges did you face with this? So there's something like you can I don't know if you like writing or um, I don't know what your avenue of expression is, but 
being able to write a blog post about working on the project can shine light into what it's like to work with you as a developer, like what you were challenged with, how you overcame that. Um, that's really helpful. But also, if it's a project that provided value, especially monetary value, to another business or person, or you gained a user base out of it, like that should shine. That's the kind of context that's important. Here, uh, you, you're kind of getting to it. You're describing what it is, but again, the project should speak for itself with that. Um, so you don't really need, what I'm saying is you don't need a lot of this. I think what you need more of is a stack. Um, the problem that you're actually solving. And I, th I think you kind of include that. Uh, but yeah, that okay, so just to sum up what I'm recommending, screenshots or thumbnails on this page. Um, I don't know if I like the word view. I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't know what other word I would replace it with, but it's going to be a word that says more details about the project, right? Um, and then a link to source control. Maybe another image on here that provides a little bit more context to the project. Um, gives a little bit more of a visual. But I think you have a good number of projects to start your portfolio out with. I think this is good. Oh, I noticed, okay, self-taught full stack web developer. So that's, that's make it a statement. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, for example, the uh, first CTO I had uh, had a huge thing against boot camp graduates because he had a bad experience with them. So if I put, I don't know, boot camp full stack web developer, that CTO probably would have exited my portfolio. And so you might have, just keep in mind, you might have people that are really sold on a computer science degree or boot camp where they don't believe in self-taught. I don't, I think that's going to be um, a little bit rare because I think a lot of people appreciate what it takes to be a self-taught full stack de developer. But just keep in mind, you're making a statement with that and you're excluding certain people that uh, might have a little bit of a bias and we're humans, we all have biases. So um, it's just something to keep in mind. But when I see this, I, I know I have a lot of respect for self-taught developers because I know how easy it is to get lost uh, with that, that venture. So then you have a contact, subject, message. Uh, do you really need a subject? I guess. Pretty, you pretty much just need a message, right? They just need to type something to you. Um, I'm a huge fan of auto-filled subjects based on, uh, you can get really fancy with it and have something read the content and kind of like form the subject automatically. But I think the subject is an extra input that's not needed and really people just want to type their message, their question to you. Um, so I don't know if subject is needed. Okay. So... I think this is really minimal, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you have something this minimal, it lacks personality. It lacks, um, it really lacks more opportunities to create a connection with the user. It doesn't really give, like it doesn't give me anything about your personality. I don't even know what it's like to work with you, and I think your portfolio should tell that story. So it doesn't mean you have to add more, but like I said, things like including thumbnails, images for your projects, um, can kind of show a little bit of like what you think is a good design, uh, what you think makes a good looking f uh, uh, project or app, um, including your personal picture on this, that can create a connection very early. Like little things like that can go a long way. And until you get some of that, I think this looks very dry, boring, and it doesn't really create a connection with me at all. Um, I would, I hope you like writing, because if you started a blog and maybe just did like one post a week about just like even a project you're working on, something cool that you learned, uh, that would go a long way for this. Like you could, you could have this like be very text driven, very minimal images and um, just have a lot of great content. And that would, that would shine some light into your personality and allow the employer to 
get a feel for kind of who you are and how you work, I think that'd go a long way. All right, mobile time. Let's do a hard refresh. I like the animation. It's pretty quick. About contact. Looks pretty good. Again, font size is even more important on mobile. Well, I wouldn't say it's more important. It's, it's just as important. It's just, I would increase that font size a little bit. Uh, padding is pretty appropriate. Um, so as far as the colors, I mean, white on anything can, uh, white on dark colors can be a hit or a miss with contrast uh, and, and just good readability. I think white, I think blocks of text and white on a dark background can very much tire out someone's, uh, someone's eye. And I, I think we have to do a lot to alleviate that. And we talked about the line spacing. We talked about um, increasing the font size. Both of those can do it. I love that you left line everything and you kept that with mobile. That is good. Everything looks clean overall. Um, you don't have a lot of information. So I, I think if I were to add one thing to this like one feature it'd probably be a hamburger menu on mobile pushing the content down to halfway and this is where your content starts it's a rough start and i think it creates a distraction it puts a little bit more focus on your navigation when uh maybe there shouldn't be i mean you don't really have any links that lead to the next section so maybe this is important um yeah, because if you just, I, I would I would still add a hamburger menu in. I would because you even like you could even if you want to get really creative you could link to your projects page, uh, like here you could link to your projects page, and that way you could condense this, uh, and it can open if you'd like it to open. But most of the time, people want to view the content itself on the page they're on, and then they'll have more room to do so without having to scroll down. And when you increase the font size and uh, spacing, uh, this is going to kind of get pushed off the page anyways. So you want to bring that up as high as possible. What else? Uh, I think that's it. Good job with the portfolio. I, I like that you have a decent amount of projects. Um, I'm not going to dive into specific projects and really how effective they're going to be. Um, those would be completely separate videos. But I think overall, it's a minimal profile. I think it needs a little bit more personality, a little bit more of a view into who you are, and not necessarily through text, but just um, we, we kind of talked about a few, a few of the different ways you can do that. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. So if you like this type of review, uh, like the video, that lets me know. If you would like me to um, review one of your portfolio websites or even a portfolio project, uh, just DM me on Twitter. Or you can even just comment below this video, but DM me on Twitter as well, developer.tv. Um, I will continue doing these for as uh, long as you guys keep giving me portfolios to look at. So thanks, everyone. I will see you in the next video.